everyone. So we're just about to go ahead and get started. Um, are you all here to see Tony and Selmo? The voice of Donald Duck? Come on, sound excited. And just a reminder, this is televised downstairs. Um, well, not televised, but broadcasted to our main events, or exhibition hall. We are in main events, so hi to everyone out there. We're gonna go ahead and bring him out right now. Please come out, Tony. I know, we'll have so many questions. Can we get the mic? Hey. You, try just, again? It's just this day. I'm sorry. This is a magical day. You can probably try. hear me anyway. Yeah. Um, try, and, try and speak into it. Hello. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Would you mind telling us about where you got your start? It's, it's uh, such a long story. I started in traditional animation, uh, animating on Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, all of those. And I was the, uh, I apprenticed in animation to the nine old men who worked with Walt on all of his classic films. And at the same time, Clarence Nash was there, who was the original voice of Donald Duck, and he took me under his wing, pun, pun intended, and uh, I trained with him for three years for the voice, and then when he passed away, I, I carried on the torch for him. And then I did both for a long time, and now they don't, traditional animation is a felony, so we just, uh, I just do the voice. Oh, that's awesome. Um, do you have opportunities to come out to a lot of conventions like this, or? I do, it's been a busy summer. I think this is the, the book end of it, though. Oh, nice. So it's nice to end in, in Hawaii. Very fun. So you said that you're the first, so you're the first person to animate and voice the duck, right? Yes. That's very exciting. What is your favorite project that you've worked on as Donald? Uh, probably the Three Musketeers. And then the um, new one, which comes out with the Disney streaming service in November, I believe, mm -hmm. called Legend of the Three Caballeros, which I'm very excited about. It's, uh, they did a really good job on it. It's probably the best looking and sounding uh, in a while. Oh, that's awesome. I'm really excited to see it. I am too, actually. Mm. It's because we finished it three years ago, so it's been sitting waiting for the... Mm. The, the finalized yeah. stuff. Okay, very cool. Um, by the way, at any time, if you'd like to come and ask questions, please line up at this mic right to my right, to your guys' left. Yeah, questions are going to be good, and I'll tell you ahead of time, we're going to have to cut it a little short, because I've got some mm -hmm. stuff going on to try and get back to the mainland, but... I want to take all your questions if you have them. Sure. So we'll be cutting at 11.20. So please go ahead and ask some questions. We'd love to hear Tony answer them. Hi. Hi. Um, so, I mean, you've played Donald Duck many times. And Donald has different, like, characteristics in each, like, film or uh, text, technically. Which was your favorite to voice? And which one was, like, maybe that you felt was kind of out of the box for Donald's character? Well, he shouldn't have anything different about him. The integrity of the character yeah. was uh, very important to yeah. Walt Disney, so keeping them the same mm -hmm. is kind of my job. And when I could animate him and voice him, I had complete control of that. Yeah. But now that the animation is done in many different places, he often ends up looking different, which mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's be that's why I'm excited about Three Caballeros, because they put him, we call it, on model. He looks classic, and he's he's well constructed, and he looks good, and the colors are right. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as uh, my favorite things, I think what I already said about Three Musketeers was probably the most fun because I got to animate him and yeah. voice him, and it looked good, and I think it turned out well. And the same goes for Legend of the Three Caballeros when it comes out. I think you'll like it. Yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> Awesome. What do you think was um, your hardest project to have done? Anything really difficult? Um, DuckTales was a challenge, and uh, you know that's a, an example where they tried to reinvent the wheel a little bit, and I don't think that ever is a good idea. You know, mm. if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Gotcha. Um, but beyond that, um, the shorts are fun. We're going to do more of those. Oh. Those will be on the streaming service as well. I guess that starts in November. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any other questions out there from the three people in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> There's some of you. And again, Exhibition Hall is watching. Please come up here if you have any questions. <laughs> So when it comes to like traditional animation, uh -huh. um, what did you work on like specifically for those movies? Did you do character design, backgrounds? What was your favorite aspects of, of doing tra traditional animation? I was an animator. Uh, I started training with Eric Larson, who was one of the nine old men, and we just did tests before we were ever put on a production for about a year. And then when he thought we were ready, uh, we actually started with him in a unit on uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. So we animated different scenes in that uh, feature featurette. Uh, he would pass us a scene and we would go work on it. We'd bring it back to him and he would go over it. So it was a great opportunity for learning and it was working on the classic characters, you know, Mickey, Donald, Daisy, all those goofy were in there and I got to work on all of them. Um, from uh, that point to Beauty and the Beast, I was an animator. On Beauty and the Beast, I was a directing animator on the wardrobe, the armoire, the Joanne Worley character. So I did all of that. And then later on, like on Tarzan, I did all of the final drawing for Porter, uh, Jane's father. I did all of that too. So it's nice when there's not a lot of footage you can uh, do it all yourself. If there's a lot, like the main characters, there's many, many animators. So you don't have, have it all to yourself. Oh, very cool. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? We make it to cut this shorter than we thought. <laughs> nah, no worries. I will come up with things. So is this uh, your first time to Hawaii? No, I've been here. In, I love Hawaii. <laughs> but it's nice to have another reason to come back. That's always nice. Thank you for coming to our con. Thank you for having We're me. We're very excited to have the voice of Donald Duck. Ah! <laughs> it's to <laughs> I love it. Um, Donald Duck was um, was a voice that I grew up with. Even um, I watched Ducktales and stuff, and yeah, it was great. So, what do you think? Um, so, I'm a really big fan of Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. um, was it really difficult to work on that kind of uh, production because it's a video game rather than something like um, a TV show or movie? They, I approach them all the same because it's all about uh, you know just doing a good job to uh, for Donald. Uh, Walt's guys that I apprenticed with would always say, "You have to do the best job you can because your name is going to be this on this long after you're gone." So I always keep that in mind. So I'm very protective of it, and mm -hmm. and uh, um, I have high standards for myself. So I approach everything the same. The only thing that was different about Kingdom Hearts was there's just so much more dialogue, because there's so many options that mm -hmm. they have to do thousands and thousands of mm -hmm. of those, and most of it's you know running and yelling and grunting and and screaming. <laughs> Yes. Um, but there were a lot of lines too, so there's just, mm -hmm. it, it's more, there's more of a quantity. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had recording sessions for that almost once a week for about wow. nine months, you know, whereas an episode of, of uh, uh, <laughs> think of all the shows I've done, a TV show, you can do an episode in an hour. Oh, wow. So... Cool. You know, and there may be 13 or 24 episodes, or the shorts are only, you know, three minutes. True. So mm -hmm. that takes much less time, but I approach them all the same. Do you get to interact with any of the cast, or is it very much like you're in the booth, you kind of just figure it out as you go? Yeah, you really just do your lines now, because technology has changed so much that mm -hmm. uh, they always do it separately, because they use a different mic for each one of us, mm -hmm. and they mix uh, the EQ on the engineers board differently for each one of us in the when we started we would do it ensemble and that's fun because then you can kind of play off each other better sure. uh, so there are pros and cons to both the pros to the way they do it now is I can do a line five times and they can take a word from each take and mix them up oh wow so if uh, the first word is clear and take one and the second word is clear and take three they'll 
digitally put those together seamlessly so it sounds like I did it and it makes me sound better than I could have organically. So that's kind of a nice tool to have. Wow, that's impressive. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I could go on forever about Kingdom Hearts. Um, one thing um, I really liked was the development of Donald's character. Um, do you have any thoughts of it, like from Kingdom Hearts 1, which I guess started um, a little over 10 years ago, to where it's come to now with the release of Kingdom Hearts 3? Is he different? Mm, I don't know about different, but I feel like um, he's gotten closer to Sora. I don't know. Just to be perfectly good. honest, I didn't play the game because I don't have the equipment and I <laughs> don't right. know how. You I, said you see it at the rap party sometimes. Yeah, I have seen extent. clips and mm -hmm. and I noticed that he looks, they all look better. I mm -hmm. think the yes. last one had much better color and mm -hmm. and detail and, and what I was talking about earlier, they're on model, so they look really good. Gotcha. So I was uh, really happy with that. And mm -hmm. I was able to have a little bit more say in which takes they used and which lines they used for clarity because awesome. I want him to be as authentic to right? be able to as enunciate as much as possible because it's not easy to understand Donald as it is so. <laughs> sure although I think one line they used I guess all the time this looks like a place for ingredients or something <laughs> oh yeah that's not a good line that's not and a good line I, if I had known they were going to use it so much, which I didn't. You know, that was just one of a thousand lines. Yeah. I figured it would, and I remember thinking, that's not, nobody's going to understand that, but it'll just be once, so. No, it, um. But I guess it's a lot. If I had known that, I would have finessed that somehow. No, I think it was pretty, um, it becomes pretty clear the more you play the game that that's exactly what's being said. Um, it actually became kind of like a running joke afterwards. It was like, Donald, heal me, and it was like, this is, looks like a place for some ingredients. <laughs> See, you can't understand it. <laughs> oh, we have a question. Please. Yeah, so when you're doing recording for like a show or a movie or a short, I assume you probably have a pretty good idea of what the story is as mm -hmm. it's flying through. So when you're doing like Kingdom Hearts, do you have a similar sense of the story or does it feel more like a bunch of lines that you're it's not sure bunch, how they're yeah. going to go together? That's a really good question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, when we do a TV episode or a film, it's all storyboarded. So we look at the story and they put it together with scratch lines. So they will cut it together so you can see the short in storyboards. It's not animated yet. So I know exactly context for shorts and television and features. But for the video game, we knew nothing. Although, they had already done it in Japan, so it was animated and it was in Japanese and we had to translate it into English, but I didn't know context. I didn't know how this fit into anything on any of it. Mm -hmm. So there were thousands and thousands and thousands of lines that were just random to me. So it was really kind of up to the director to say, okay, well, what's happening here is, and I would still go, that doesn't make any sense, but. Yeah, mm -hmm. most of the series. So they'd doesn't. give you some context <laughs> clues, but you didn't right. have anything to put them into. Right, gotcha. so I just trusted the director and did the line. Gotcha, thank you. Good question. <laughs> The finished product, I think, was great. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I haven't seen the whole thing. I guess mm -hmm. it's hours and hours, but what I saw looked good, and I'm hearing good things. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to that, like what I said earlier about mm -hmm. the guy said, you know, it's going to have your name on it long after you're gone, so do a good job. So I pay attention to the internet chatter afterwards yeah. to see how things are going, and I see that Kingdom Hearts it has a good... Uh, uh, review from fans and so other shows like DuckTales don't so you know I take that into consideration. I don't know the new DuckTales people are really excited. Well I mean just as far as my performance because mm -hmm. they used so much dialogue which is inappropriate oh, I see. and then they sped it up oh. so there would be a lot of comments uh, like how come I can understand Tony in the shorts but I can't understand him in DuckTales and they don't think well they probably wrote too much dialogue or they probably oh. sped it up they think wow well, he's not doing as good a job so oh, it's on me you know mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question and feel free to move the mic down closer to you uh, since you have such a close connection with Donald do you collect Donald 
paraphernalia? I do. Not new stuff, but vintage stuff. I have a huge collection, actually. I wanted to, I got a lot of stuff from Clarence when he passed away that was his, and, I, and Jack Hanna was the director of the Donald Duck unit under Walt Disney, so all those original shorts, and he was my mentor for drawing. So he had a lot of things like model sheets and, and, and scripts and things that he had worked that he gave me. And then I also collect original movie posters, vintage from the 40s, so from the 1930s and 40s. I'm trying to get a one sheet from all the, because in those days they made a poster for the cartoon as well as the feature. So I have, of, out of 300 and something Donald Duck cartoons, I have maybe 275. Wow. So, yeah, that takes up a lot of room. And then vintage toys, you know, the old ones from the 30s, the rubber with the long beak. And um, I didn't get into comic books, but uh, also original art cells and backgrounds and anything I could find from uh, the classic stuff. I really like, I kind of go for waltz stuff. I didn't, I kept some things from, that I worked on that I drew, but mostly the vintage classic stuff. The vintage stuff is more collectible, I feel like, and more valuable yeah. these days. <clears throat> and rarer, so I feel mm -hmm. like I'm kind of preserving it for posterity, and it'll all go mm -hmm. to the Walt Disney Family Museum eventually. Have you been there? Oh, really? Good. Did you like it? Yeah. I think it's the best tribute to Walt, because it's done by his family. It's, I don't know if you haven't been or heard about it, the Walt Disney family uh, set up a museum in San Francisco, but right by the Golden Gate Bridge, it's beautiful uh, real estate, uh, showing Walt Disney's life from start to end. And then they have a separate gallery uh, where they'll do exhibits on Disney artists like Mary Blair, or Tyrus Wong. And uh, I loan them a lot of stuff, like most of my, all of my Mickey Mouse posters are there right now for their Mickey Mouse exhibit for Mickey's 90th birthday, so. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Sure. <laughs> well, on the mic, we can have whoever's downstairs can hear you too. I'm just curious about technique. I remember you mentioned the other day that you can have a terrible head cold and still do Donald. Um, what do you do to what have you done over the years to preserve your voice or um, and, uh, improve it? It's, uh, um, it's really not a voice, it's a magic trick that I do with a technique that I, you know, that's secret. But, so I don't use my vocal cords, so I can, ha I can have laryngitis and still do Donald Duck, but if I have a head cold and my sinuses aren't clear, or if I've had any kind of dental work done, that can really mess it up for a week. And the other thing I have to do is anytime I record, I have to do run through all the lines the day before just to work on enunciation and get those muscles tight again. Because it's like working out at the gym, you know, if you haven't worked out for a while, you get weaker. And these muscles have to be tight, so I have to tighten them up the night before. Like it doesn't sound very good today, I'm noticing. And Clarence would say that too. He'd say, well, the duck sounded really good that day. And I said, well, what do you mean, what? And he goes, I don't know, some days it just sounds better than others, but you also have to keep the muscles strong that you used to do it. And um, there's also a curve in general, if, even if you listen to Clarence's Donald Duck, the early stuff in the 1930s, like The Wise Little Hen, 1934 to maybe 1944, it, he got much better. By the time he got to Three Caballeros, it was clear as a bell. And I noticed that on my early stuff, too. But even now, after 37 years of doing it, it's, it, I'll still have days where it, I can't, it's not clear as a bell. I mean, it's there. It's just, I, I'm probably the only one that notices. And it also depends on what you say. Like I said, if you say words that are inappropriate, it's not very clear. But if you say the standard stuff like, it's, you know, pretty clear. <laughs> hard consonants are clearer than, you can say a long word with hard consonants like, <laughs> Boy, it's not, you know, I had breakfast. That's the other thing. I can't, I, I can't eat for two hours before. Oh, wow. And I can feel that there's too much saliva. Gotcha. So, 
Yeah, it's like that with um, singing too. Yeah. So I actually took some vocal classes and um, it's the same thing. Some days it sounds better than others. Like I wonder why that is. It's just kind of one of Because it's all organic. Something might be a little swollen in there or I don't know. Hmm. Definitely could be. Do we have any other questions? Please don't be shy. Well, relating to what you just said, is it, hard, is it more difficult to sing? No, it's actually easier because it's slower. When you sing, you're, it's slower than speaking. So. Wow, that was bad. But you get the idea. Yes, most definitely. <clears throat> oh, I love hearing that. Um, anything anyone wants to hear about in particular? Um, Tony's worked on a lot of things as the duck. Um, have you done any other work? Any other things that um, you want to work on in the future? You mean with Donald? Either with um, Donald or not with Donald, however. No, at this point, I'm just, you know, keeping him strong and, and healthy and, and doing them when they need him. And there's a lot of stuff, you know, Disneyland parades or stuff for Euro Disneyland mm -hmm. or toys and ice shows. We do three of those a year. and. Wow. Um, parades for the parks and and on top of the there's right now there's DuckTales and the Mickey Mouse shorts and Legend of the Three Caballeros mm -hmm. and they're gonna do another uh, yeah there's secret stuff we're not supposed to talk about but. Um, this is just a really random fun question so Disney's been doing a lot of live-action remakes how would you feel if they decided to do a live-action of Donald Duck don't even put that hey, out after, there. Hey, after I, Lion King, I'm just saying would, anything's possible. Yeah, anything is possible. Let's not even put that out there. That's <laughs> not, not a good idea. Yeah, I agree. What was all about originality and creativity and doing something unique that nobody else was doing and, and pushing the envelope and, and making it better and having a higher bar and, and he wouldn't do sequels. He said early on... Uh, when he, when he, early, 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 mm -hmm. before they even did Snow White, he did The Three Little Pigs, and it was an incredible success with that song during the Depression, and people were going to the movie theaters just to see the short. They would buy a ticket and see the short, and then they would leave. Wow. So the distributor said, we need more pigs. You gotta make more pigs. And he made three more shorts with The Three Little Pigs in them, which have been completely forgotten, and he said, I'm not going to do that again. He said, you can't top pigs with pigs. Mm -hmm. You have to do something new. So, you know, he did Snow White and then what, you know, Fantasia. Mm -hmm. He was always pushing himself, whether it was that or a theme park that had never been done. We take everything he did now for granted. Very much. But at the time it was done, it had never been done before. And it was uh, amazing. I think Disneyland, even in the 60s, was better than it is now because it was unique. It wasn't like any other theme park. It mm -hmm. wasn't... It was stuff you could only see there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just encourage them to do something new, something creative, something... Something uh, totally out there. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Um, you mentioned Disneyland. Do you get to go often or see any of... We can. Um, come to life? When I was, you know, when I was a kid, it was, it was euphoria to me because... Mm -hmm. But all that stuff that I loved so much, like the People Mover and mm -hmm. Carousel of Progress, and I mean, I just go on and on and on. They're all gone. Yeah, I think the only thing from the original park is what the Jungle Cruise now. Yeah, but even that's been all. Everything's Revised, been yeah. altered in a way that I don't. It's just different. It's mm -hmm. not better. Gotcha. Again, it's like reinventing the wheel. Like I don't, you know, Walt did say. Disneyland will never be completed as long as there's imagination in the world, and maybe there isn't any imagination, I don't know, because I don't see, I wouldn't touch his stuff, you know, like, do what you want in California Adventure. Yeah, but preserve But don't the take something he did out and put something you think is better, mm -hmm. like Carousel of Progress is the best example of that. That was such a, a it made you feel good. It was a great, and you could sit down for 20 minutes on the carousel <laughs> and watch this ride and take a rest and be entertained. And they took it out and what's in there? It's like video games. Yeah, they've been changing it up a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, does anyone else have any questions? I'm curious about, um, I'm watching kids today 
get nostalgic about vinyl and film cameras. Are you being approached at all by people who want to do traditional animation? Everybody wants traditional animation. It's the first thing anybody asks about, and I think it was one of the biggest mistakes that was made. Uh, I, I think uh, there's there's nothing wrong with CG, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, it's an American art form like jazz, which is rare now too. But it takes ten thousand hours to learn how to be an animator, and when you look at Walt's films any of them, every scene is unique and not like any other scene in any other film or even in that film. But when you look at CG, there's a sameness about it because it's basically, it's not animation, it's puppetry. They build a rig, so there's a puppet in the computer and they, you know, arm up, take number five, blink number seven. So it, it's, there's a, it's sterile, it's not organic, it's not, like traditional animation and you can tell a story in any medium whether it's television or a play on a stage or a live action film or in animation you can do it in CG or you can do it in traditional and some things lend themselves that don't really exist that are um, you know when you take a blank piece of paper and you start from nothing and you make an, your audience cry with Bambi's mother getting shot you're not aware that you're watching paint and paper and drawings, you're, you believe you're watching, you know, that was, that was Walt's goal and, and that art form reached a level with Walt Disney that it had never been at before and frankly hasn't been since. And I personally wouldn't have said, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. And everybody wants it and now they've thrown out the infrastructure, they don't have the cameras or the desks or, and it, you know, how do we, it takes 10 years. So how would we even train a new generation of animators if we don't have a spare 10 years to get there? So it kind of breaks my heart, honestly. Mm. It's a sad thing, but we still have the duck. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, unless we have maybe one or two last questions, we can... Uh, yeah, please ask some questions or any topics you guys are interested in. Well, I'm going to uh, go ahead. Why don't you tell me a film that you worked on as an animator? I worked on Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King and uh, Tarzan, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Um, I worked on all the features that we did in that span of time. I think the last one was Home on the Range that we did there. So, ah, just in time. Um, Thank you all for coming. I'm going to be downstairs at signing things. If you want to come down there, I'm only going to be there for an hour. All right. uh, can you hold on one second? <laughs> um, I'm trying to wrap something up to get to the airport. Yeah, no Thank worries, you all for coming. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for coming. It was great to have you.